how do we test for productivity in an ecosystem? So one of the things that we can do to test for productivity is to measure how much is used through cellular respiration. So I'm gonna take here my fish tank that is filthy and full of algae. And the producers are the algae and the water plants in here. And we're gonna calculate how much that they use for respiration, for their own respiration. So remember, plants do both photosynthesis and they do cellular respiration. And productivity is the amount that uh, is left over in their uh, biomass for primary consumers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the dissolved oxygen levels of the fish tank. Now the fish tank doesn't have fish in it anymore because the fish are all behind me in these eco columns. And so it's time for me to clean the fish tank. Uh, but before that, we're going to use it to test productivity. So first I'm going to rinse my dissolved oxygen probe in distilled water and then I'm going to go ahead and measure the dissolved oxygen of my fish tank. So I have my dissolved oxygen meter here and it will take about a minute for me to get an accurate reading. So the reading that I have here is 7.4 on my dissolved oxygen meter. So that's my beginning dissolved oxygen level. And I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my probe and distilled water and put the cap back on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some bottles and I'm going to fill them up all the way. Now I want to make sure there's no air bubbles. And so I'm going to cap it underwater. So first I'm going to make sure all the air bubbles go away. And then I'm gonna put the cap on underwater so that I have no air. I want to make sure there's no air in here because it will skew or mess up the reading later on. And I'm going to fill up two bottles with the same water source. Now you can do this in a pond, you can do this in a lake, any body of water. So now I have my two completely filled bottles and I'm going to add some Elodia. So I'm going to take a water plant here and I'm going to add the same length. So I want to get almost equal sizes because I want that to be a constant. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure here um, some of my Elodia and I'm going to pull off pieces that are both exactly three centimeters in length and they're both the same thickness because I want to have almost identical pieces or as identical as I can get it here. So I'm gonna take my bottles and I'm going to carefully put in the Elodia, make sure no air gets in. And I think I need to recap these underwater. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna recap them underwater so that again, all my air escapes and all I have is water and Elodia. So I'm going to put my Elodia in and I'm going to cap it underwater. All right, I think that's good. So I'm going to check, do I have air bubbles? Nope. So I'm good. These are good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and dry them off and Now I'm going to cover one with um, black paper. So I have black paper here and I'm going to take one and I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to also put on a cup so there's going to be no light in here. So what do you think this is going to measure if there's no light? So it's going to right measure the cellular respiration. This one is going to have both the photosynthesis and the cellular respiration because it's going to stay under light. So I'm going to have one in the dark and one in the light and I'm going to leave it for 48 hours. Here are the bottles. They're under this light source for 48 hours. So I have black paper around this one and both bottles have all the way filled with water and a small piece of identical Elodia in each bottle and so they'll remain under this light for 48 hours.
so it's been 48 hours and I'm going to now take a look at the dissolved oxygen levels in each of these two bottles. So I have here the bottle that has been in the dark and the bottle in the light. One thing that you'll notice, let's go ahead and take a look here. This is the one in the light and there's actually air bubbles at the top. So it looks like the Elodia plant has made some oxygen because now there's air bubbles when at the beginning there was no air bubbles in either bottle. We made extra sure of that. So now it's time to go ahead and take my dissolved oxygen readings. So I wanna make sure I don't mix up the bottles. So I'm gonna put my black paper over here indicating this was in the dark and this one was in the light. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up first the one that was in the light carefully. And I'm gonna take my dissolved oxygen meter here and I'm going to first, I'm going to rinse my probe in distilled water. And now I'm gonna go ahead and check the reading for the one that was in the light. And it might overflow just slightly. So it started out at 7.4 and my reading is increasing actually on my dissolved oxygen meter and it takes about a minute to get a full reading. So after about a minute, the dissolved oxygen reading is 10.0 milligrams per liter. So it looks like my dissolved oxygen reading went up with the addition of the Elodia. And in the light. So now the Elodia in the bottle of fish tank water that was in the dark for 48 hours. So now I'm going to go ahead and measure the dissolved oxygen of this one. And again, it'll take about a minute to get my reading. And this one is dropping. So we started at 7.4 48 hours ago. And we are dropping now to 6.6, 6.5, and it'll continue to keep going. So my reading after about a minute is on here is 5.3 milligrams per liter. So the, we started at 7.4, and the one in the light read 10.0 after 48 hours. And then the one in the dark read 5.3 after 48 hours.